a few days ago I have published this circuit on YouTube consisting of one transistor stage here, one transistor stage here. In between I told there is a kind of black box. Want to refer to the earlier video. This is by the way say a kind of universal two transistor amplifier and like I told in the earlier video um, both transistor stages, this is the second stage and here is the first stage, can amplify to their maximum. Say 300 times, I don't know that exactly. Um, anyway, it can amplify such a lot that all the say losses in the filter can be compensated uh, by this first transistor stage or that second transistor stage. So um, it means that you can connect here in between between these two electrodes here and here any kind of filter um, because you can lift up the frequencies even when there is an enormous loss in audio range in this in that filter you can lift up the frequency again with that second transistor stage. Though there is of course always say a kind of problem um, and uh, that means that uh, when you want to use a filter to create a certain sound effect it will be affected by the amplification of the second stage and also by the first stage. Quite strange, but of course we know we have here in the emitter lead that big capacitor and when you look at the electronics theory you can see that this unit here, the um, emitter, resistor and the capacitor have a very big effect on amplifying the lower frequencies, lower frequency bands. And here we have the same. But of course, when all these lower frequencies bands don't come true, uh, there's nothing, not so much more to amplify here. And furthermore, uh, perhaps it is a, it will be in a certain way uh, somewhat uh, sloppy perhaps not very easy to understand video. Um, well, that has everything to do with the, say, the classical experimental setup that I always use. I look at circuits on the World Wide Web, etc., etc., test them, uh, take my own conclusions, adapt circuits, etc. So, this is, say, the, the first ID here. But now, what must be connected here in between? Between this electrode and that electrode and ground? Well, I've talked about the so-called parallel T filter. Well, this is that parallel T filter. And you can find on the World Wide Web many, many calculations about how to calculate how that filter will work. Say, the effects in the audio band between, say, approximately 20 Hz and 18 kHz. Of course, when you are interested, no problems with that. Do all these calculations, etc., etc., uh, to calculate such a filter, but on the on the same time realize that such a filter is connected between two transistor stages, at least in this case. And both transistor stages have an output impedance here and an input impedance here. That means that the what you calculate here can be damped. So the higher frequencies can be damped, the lower frequencies, etc., etc. So 
that's also say the aim of this video. Uh, and that is do your own experiments. I want to demonstrate that. So here we have again that parallel T filter. Resistor, resistor, etc, etc, capacitor here, etc. Um, you will often find this, this type of um, parallel T filter in op amp circuits on the World Wide Web. And in that case, it's often called a notch filter. Well, I want to stay away, uh, at least in this video. Of course, I can say um, get properly into whether it's a notch filter or other type of filter. But my approach is, like I say, experimental. So anyway, this filter has a very serious and sharp effect on how the sound that is sent in here, say here the complete frequency band, 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz, and here the audio out. Um, this is the principle, and here it is how I made it in real. In fact, it's the same circuit. Here we have that voltage divider. Here we have a voltage divider. These two are, are resistors. In fact, it's the same circuit. I've used two uh, potentiometers here, 10k and 1 mega ohm. And it must, of course, be connected between the two transistor stages. This is the first stage, and here's the second stage. Well, let's listen for a while how that works out with these uh, component values. 56 nanofarad, 100 nanofarad here, here 10,000 uh, uh, ohms, etc. So, I don't want to make this video too long, but anyway, I will do my best to show all these things. Anyway, uh, now I play a part part of music, copyright free music, etc. And let's see what happens when we say change the value of especially this, this potentiometer and this potentiometer. Well, let's listen. Now I change the value of this potentiometer here. Sounds gets more dull. And we move it to the other side. It also gets more dull. Well, could be a good property, but anyway. Let's see the effects of these two here. Say does these two potentiometers amplifier sound get much, gets much more sharp but now it is dull again now the volume control here At the same time, volume control and now turning this. So here there is a sharp peak. Where it all where it all seems to sound quite okay, but anyway. I stop the music now because I want to also demonstrate an other part of the filter. The faint hum that you hear now is due to the lack of electromagnetic shielding because everything here, everything here, is on my workbench with long wires, etc., etc. So, in the future, when I want to uh, say make it all definite, it's no problem. I want to show the effect of this potentiometer here in the parallel T 
die filter. Dat is dus this potentiometer. I'm turning it now given the all the say these uh, capacitor values. And let's listen. The potentiometer here is by the way in the middle position. I hope I can play it again. And especially uh, perhaps the next music file will be a copyright file. Anyway, let's listen. When that's that case, I will stop it immediately. Well, this is Bach. That's, that's not copyrighted. Anyway. Uh, Bach, Liebster Jesu, we are here. So, um, turn that potentiometer again. Only problem with organ music, I music is that it doesn't have such a broad um, frequency band in the audio range. Anyway. And you can, you can surely see that here part of the audio spectrum gets lost, also with this uh, organ piece. And here the same happens. Say, that's a, in a kind of way an effect of the parallel T filter. Um, I can elaborate much more on this and I also made say quite a few experiments to say uh, give completely different sound patterns not only this in a certain way bleak sound so I uh, want to go to my book and here is also a parallel T filter a notch filter so when you want to make that you can also use this schematic and do your experiments or buy my book here is the text of my book I publish it for free because it's in my opinion important to tell how such a filter works and I've used here by purpose a field effect transistor BF245C that's obsolete at the moment um, in the text box I will give say a more modern uh, field effect transistor that can be used in this circuit and here you can do all your experiments Say, connect this to another position, etc., etc. Well, this is, by the way, the best circuit. This is not parallel T, but it is a very good circuit to experiment with. Hyperlot transistor, fat filter, and especially. When you make all these connections, X1 or X2 or X3, etc., etc., you will hear completely different sound patterns, etc. It's, say, in a certain way. Uh, an extension of what I've, uh, what I'm showing here. These were uh, earlier experiments, and here you can see two x1, x2, x3, etc., etc. So pen over somewhat. It's all in my book, by the way, schematics two 
audio amplifiers and loudspeaker boxes and of course I will try to give a good replacement for this obsolete field vector system. It's in this book. For more information about making audio, audio amplifiers etc etc I want to refer to this book. Thanks for watching. Uh, doing own experiments to get to the most beautiful audio amplifier amplification, the most beautiful sound that you like, can be done uh, with, with these schematics. Thanks for watching.